Welcome to the Over 50 Health and Wellness Podcast. I'm your host, Kevin English. I'm a certified personal trainer and nutrition coach, and my mission is to help you get into the best shape of your life, regardless of your age, so that you can show up in life as the healthiest, strongest, most vital version of yourself. But before we get to this episode, I want to let you know that today's show is brought to you by The Silver Edge. The Silver Edge is my online personal training and nutrition coaching business where I help you get off the exercise and diet hamster wheel and start making permanent healthy lifestyle changes so that you can enjoy the second half of your life with strength and confidence and show up as the healthiest, strongest, most vital version of yourself no matter your age. If you're interested in learning more, send me an email at coach at silveredgefitness.com and we'll start a conversation about your personal fitness goals. Now, today we have another edition of the Coach's Corner, so no guest today, it's just me, and we'll be back next week with our regular interview format. But here's what we're covering in today's episode. I start out talking about how strength training can improve your sex life, and then I move on and talk about the importance of healthy sun exposure. Okay, let's do this. Time to get on with today's show. Strength Train for a Better Sex Life Ooh la la, spring is in the air, and as one of Bambi's friends said in the 1942 Disney classic, everybody gets Twitterpated in the springtime. But some of us over 50 get less Twitterpated than we used to, and we're often way too quick to attribute this loss of libido as a natural part of aging. The erectile dysfunction market is currently close to four and a half billion dollars. That's billion with a B and growing. While the causes of sexual dysfunction and lowered libido are certainly multifactorial, one of the best ways to increase your sexual desire and performance is to regularly strength train. Studies show that men who regularly strength train report having more sex and fewer sexual performance issues and women who regularly strength train report having greater sexual desire, arousal, and satisfaction. Let's take a look at some of the ways that strength training can improve your sex life. First up, regular strength training increases blood flow to all parts of the body, both in the short term and in the long term. And biological arousal begins with healthy blood flow to the genitals for both men and women, so it makes sense that we'd want strong, healthy blood flow. The second way that strength training increases your libido and improves your sexual performance is by optimizing your hormones. Regular strength training increases testosterone, which is responsible for sex drive in both men and women. And lifting weights also stimulates the secretion of growth hormone and helps balance estrogen and progesterone in women, all of which lead to increased sexual health and desire. Next up is the fact that strength training increases endorphins, specifically dopamine, which is a feel-good neurohormone that is linked with orgasms. In addition, these endorphins leave us feeling good post-exercise, which means we're much more likely to be in the mood later. Strength training also increases overall metabolic health meaning it reduces stored fat, improves insulin sensitivity, optimizes blood pressure and blood lipids, all of which result in a body and a mind that is more inclined and better prepared for sex. Okay, moving on. Pumping iron makes us stronger, more flexible, and increases our endurance, all of which increase our physical capabilities when it comes to lovemaking. Look at it this way. Some of us take longer than others to reach orgasm. Studies show that men typically reach orgasm in a paltry two to four minutes, while many women report taking 15 to 45 minutes. Being fit, strong, and capable goes a long way towards being physically prepared to go the distance. Regular strength training is a great way to manage and reduce stress, and stress is a libido killer. Women in particular often report that high stress is their number one mood killer. And this makes sense from an evolutionary perspective. A woman experiencing high levels of stress, or more commonly in today's world, chronic stress, is going to have a nervous system that is not optimized biologically for reproduction, which in turn cranks the libido dial down from 10 to 1. Finally, regular strength training improves confidence and self-esteem. 
which in turn boosts libido and makes us feel more sexually desirable. So there you go. There's just a few of the ways that strength training can improve your sex life. So the next time you're not feeling motivated to hit the gym, maybe consider a few of these reasons. You and your significant other will be happier and healthier in the long run. Now, I've talked a bunch about strength training, and some of you may be wondering, what do I mean when I say strength training or weightlifting? So for the most part, it's exactly what it sounds like. Typically, this is a well-designed program focusing on increasing lean muscle mass and reducing body fat. Now, some of you may also be thinking, what about cardio? Cardio is great and certainly can add to our endurance and cardiovascular health, and we definitely don't want to get winded in the act of vigorous lovemaking, but this is an area where we need to be careful. Excessive cardio will actually lead to muscle atrophy and deteriorate our optimal hormones, especially testosterone. So what then is the best strength training routine to give us the best bang for our buck when it comes to increasing libido and sexual performance? The basics are our best bet here. That is a program with compound lifts that incorporate the principles of progressive overload and appropriate periodization. If you're not sure where to start, I have a couple of resources that will put you on the right path. The first is for you do-it-yourselfers out there, and that's to follow a well-thought-out strength program. A good program will tell you what exercises to do, how to do them, usually with video demonstrations, what reps, sets, and rest schemes to use, and they should address both periodization as well as progressive overload. Hands down, my favorite in this category of workout programs are the ones offered by MAPS Fitness Products. These folks have the most well-thought-out, effective exercise programming on the market. And they have a program for every level of lifter, from the complete newbie to the advanced bodybuilder or performance athlete. For most folks, I'd recommend starting out with the MAPS Anabolic Plan. This is their flagship product, and it's an ideal way to begin or continue building lean muscle and burning body fat. This is a 12-week program with everything laid out for you, including video demonstrations of all the exercises. You can learn more about MAPS Fitness programs over at SilverEdgeFitness.com. Just click on the coaching tab at the top of the page. And I'll also include a link to these programs in the show notes for this episode, which you can find over at SilverEdgeFitness.com slash episode 118. Now, if you're looking for a more hands-on personalized coaching service that takes into account your nutrition and metabolic health as well, then my six-month body reset program might be ideal for you. This six-month no-nonsense program is designed to reset your body, your metabolism, and your mindset so that you can look and feel your best for the rest of your life. Right now, during the month of May, this program has a two free months promo going on. So you can get coached for six months while only paying for four of those months. If you happen to be listening to this in May of 2022 and would like to see if this program would be perfect for you, shoot me an email at coach at silveredgefitness.com and we'll start a conversation. Healthy sun exposure. So, as we mentioned in the last segment, spring is in the air, and in addition to getting Twitterpated, many of us are getting outside and into the beautiful warm sunshine. This is also the time of year when we start thinking about sun protection. You all most certainly have heard it said that our skin is our largest organ, it's true, but did you know that our skin is a living fabric and has its own microbiome? Just like your gut has a natural microbiome, and when it's well-fed and cared for, it's a happy and healthy gut, your skin also has a natural biome, which can be thought of as a community of microorganisms that live on our skin. And just like any microbiome, your skin's microbiome can be healthy, radiant, and thriving, or it can be damaged and unhealthy. We're all aware of the sun's potential harm, but let's start this conversation with some of the sun's benefits. The interaction between the sun and our skin is an ancient form of human photosynthesis. In fact, from an ancestral point of view, our bodies were meant to be exposed to the sun. Our skin is covered with vitamin D receptors, and when the sunlight hits our skin, it triggers our bodies to produce vitamin D. This sunshine vitamin, which is actually a hormone, has many benefits. 
It reduces inflammation, lowers blood pressure, lowers insulin, boosts immune systems, and improves mood, just to name a few. While sunlight clearly contributes to skin cancer, a moderate amount of sun exposure has preventative benefits for many types of cancer. Additionally, sunlight can help create healthier skin and is effective in treating skin conditions such as psoriasis, eczema, jaundice, and acne. But you may be thinking, what about UBV rays? Aren't they bad? Don't they cause skin cancer? It turns out that UBV rays do in fact cause sunburn, our body's way of self-regulating and letting us know we've had enough sun exposure. But UBV rays are also what cause our bodies to produce vitamin D. Many of us go to sunscreen as the first line of defense against the sun's harmful rays. Although more of us are lathering up every single year, the National Cancer Institute states that the rate of new melanoma cases has tripled from 1975 to 2016. In spite of sunscreen being a multi-billion dollar industry, the Journal of American Academy of Dermatology states that there is still a lack of robust evidence that sunscreen prevents skin cancer. So, based on this information, let's build a healthy sunlight exposure strategy in three simple steps. Number one, determine the appropriate amount of sun exposure for your skin type. Number two, cover up as your first line of defense. Number three, sunscreen choices. All right, so let's start with how much sun exposure is appropriate for you. And that really depends on where you live, the time of year, as well as your genetics and skin type. The National Center for Biotechnology Information has a great website that grades your skin type and then recommends how much daily sun exposure is appropriate for you. Another great resource is the D-Minder app. That's D-M-I-N-D-E-R, like D, like vitamin D, D-Minder app, which is available for both Apple and Android. And this handy app tracks where you are in the world, how much sun exposure you should get, and even advises on the best time of day for sun exposure. The second step is to cover up. So now we have an idea of how much sun exposure is ideal for us. What about additional hours in the sun? Our first line of defense is to cover up. Many major outdoor and athletic companies have hats and long sleeve shirts for men and women with sun protection built in. A few examples would be O'Neill, Under Armour, Lululemon, and Columbia. In addition, there are many niche retailers in this space, such as Coolabar and one of my favorites, Poncho. Poncho makes functional outdoor clothing that's tailored fit and stylish, so it would be great for a day out fishing, but would also look great at an afternoon cookout with friends. Number three is sunscreen, which should be your last line of defense. I'm lucky enough to live at the beach in southern North Carolina, and I cringe every time I see well-meaning parents coat their kids and themselves in sunscreen, and even more so when they spray it on. The most common of these products is typically some sort of copper tone or other brand that is sold in every single grocery store, drugstore, and tourist shop within 25 miles of the beach. These typically come with promises such as all-day sun protection or stays on strong while you swim. But even a cursory glance at the ingredient list of these types of products would make even the most hardened of us shudder. We're basically microdosing toxins every time we apply these harmful chemicals to our skin. And this is especially egregious due to the fact that what we absorb through our skin goes directly into our bloodstream. Unlike food that we eat, which passes through the liver to detoxify and pull out harmful particles, harsh chemicals go directly into the bloodstream and circulate through our bodies. Now, here at the beach, when you walk into any store, they'll have a big display of these copper tone-esque sunscreens, and savvy consumers might walk by these and go to the beauty product sections of these stores, where they're likely to find more upscale sunscreen products with labels that say things like natural mineral sunscreen, or no chemical filters, or even 100% natural. But a quick look at the ingredients list of almost all of these products reveals that they are only marginally better than their more common and less expensive brethren. Okay, so with all that being said, what's your best sunscreen strategy? First of all, as we mentioned, try to make sunscreen your last line of defense. I personally spend a ton of times outdoor in the summer. 
I fish, I surf, boat, garden, and in general try to find excuses to be outside. Once I'm past my healthy sun exposure limit, I tend to cover up. I have specific sun protection clothing based on the activity that I'm doing. When I need sunscreen, I use a product called Everyone Loves Sunshine by a small company called Living Libations. This comes as a lotion as well as a balm, and I'm actually nourishing my skin's natural healthy microbiome when I use it as well as protecting myself from the sun. You can check them out at livinglibations.com, and you can use the coupon code SILVEREDGE at checkout to save 15% on your order. Another option would be to visit the Environmental Working Group's website. They have a guide to sunscreens where they rank pretty much all of the commercially available sunscreens, as well as making recommendations for the healthiest choices. I'll include links to this and all of the other resources we mentioned in the show notes, which you can find over at silveredgefitness.com slash episode 118. So as the weather starts to warm up and you start getting outside more, think about your sun exposure and come up with a sun strategy that works for you and your loved ones. Okay, that's our show for today, folks. Again, I'll put all the links to everything we talked about in the show notes, and you can find that over at silveredgefitness.com slash episode 118. And if you enjoyed this podcast, don't forget that I have more free resources over at silveredgefree.com. There you'll find my mini guides with my top tips on nutrition, exercise, and lifestyle. So feel free to head over there and download anything that might be helpful to you. As we wrap up our time together today, you can show your support for this show in two important ways. The first is to tell a friend about this podcast and encourage them to give it a listen. The second is to give this podcast a five-star review on whatever platform you listen to podcasts on and be sure to subscribe and follow so you don't miss any future episodes. I really appreciate you spending your time with me today and until next time, stay strong.